Hello and welcome to the world of Zwift. I'm OJ Borge, inviting you to another wild week of Zwift news, events and updates. And my goodness, do we have a lot going on, so let's not waste a single minute and see what's coming up in this week's show. We join the 2021 Zwift Academy winner Maud Alderman as she competes in her first race as a pro rider for Team Canyon Shram. Rassan Bahati and Matt Stevens are at it again talking tech, cooling and comfort in part three of the Ultimate Indoor Ride. We go behind the scenes with NTT Data to see how they bring the all-important numbers to life during the Zwift Racing League and Esports World Championships. Matt Lietta and Shane Gaffney, well, they talk dirty with the Gravel Grinders workout plan. We head to the lab for another edition of Shit Hot Bike Stuff. And if all that sounds delicious, please don't hold back on grabbing your finger and very delicately pressing that like and subscribe button. Now, on with the show. The Torfotopia is reaching its conclusion, so don't miss out on the chance to earn all that sweet double XP. This year's tour includes new run and ride routes to complete, and you can take on every stage as many times as you like, meaning there is no better way to level up. One for the triathletes, the Sub 7, Sub 8 Community Series is here. From April the 4th for eight weeks, you can train alongside three Olympic gold medalists. Christian Blumenfeld, Alistair Brownlee, Nicola Spirig, and current 70.3 world champion Lucy Charles Barkley, who will be attempting on June the 5th to break seven and eight hours respectively for the Ironman distance. Those distances, if you didn't know, are 3.8 kilometers of swimming, 180 kilometers of biking, and then a 42.2 kilometer run. Ouch. Take your pick from social rides and runs, non-drafting TTs and drafting races in the build-up to the IRL race. Grab yourself a running squad and join the Zwift Running League, which will begin on April the 6th. For four weeks, you can compete as a team in self-selected pace group categories. A brilliant one for all those running clubs that are out there. Last but certainly not least, after training on Zwift in his garage, our very own Rassan Bahati and his three teammates took on the 2021 race across America with the aim of raising money for kids in LA through his charity, the Bahati Foundation. Now, the race traverses 12 states and covers 3,000 miles with 170,000 feet of climbing. So if you're looking for a cycling story that'll keep you gripped from gun to tape, then check out the 45-minute documentary in the link below. Now, Rassan has been a very busy boy as it's time for part three of the ultimate indoor ride with the main man himself and Matt Stevens, who will talk you through all things tech, cooling and comfort needed to enjoy a ride on Zwift. We've chosen our bikes. We've selected our smart trainers and now we're ready to connect to the wonderful world of Zwift. But again, we've got options. There are multiple ways to get onto the roads at Watopia, but creating the ultimate immersive experience isn't always an option for everyone. There are obvious considerations such as your budget and the location and size of the place that you're going to be Zwifting in. Some people might have a purpose-built area, while others might be Zwifting in their bedroom or even the kitchen. At one end of the tech spectrum, if you want to keep the cost down, spend a lot of time in a small space, or need to always put your setup away after you're done, then you can use something a lot of people already have access to, a tablet or a smartphone. These are easily mountable on your handlebars or a shelf or a side table. They connect via Bluetooth to your smart trainer. Just download the app from the App Store and away you go. Next step up is a MacBook, PC laptop or iPad Pro. They offer a bigger screen, there's access to the keyboard for chat, selfies and power-ups and still offer easy portability too especially if your Zwift space is temporary. The ultimate is the dedicated gaming PC. Best graphics, not used for anything else, and this can be hardwired into your home router or to your network. And that is what I'll be using on my ultimate setup. With all this in mind and keeping ultimate at the forefront of my thinking, I'm going for a flat screen 43 inch TV for maximum in-game immersion. My sound system is actually quite a discreet, subtle one. I've got my iPhone with my Apple in-ear earpods um, because I'm a pretty sweaty guy, so I can't actually use my over-the-ear ones because they'll just get horrible, soggy and sweaty. And also, on my iPhone, I'll have open all of the time my companion app because I'm a big fan of giving ride-ons. So that's me. Rasan, what's your tech setup, mate? It's simple, Matt. The bigger, the better. America! You may have a 43-inch screen, which is cute, but in my ultimate tech setup, I'm using a massive 50 inch flat screen to Zwift. Oh, 
and why have one screen when you can have two? I have a second smaller screen, which is actually the same size as your screen, playing my favorite cycling races. It's a must have item for me. Correct tech, check. Next is keeping cool. We all know that cycling outdoors is great as their temperatures are cooled by the elements and headwinds. The faster we go, the greater the wind. But how do we adjust for that indoors? Without a fan, all that wasted heat creates superheated pockets of air around your body. This is probably the biggest cause for new Zwifters complaining that they can't hold the same power indoors as they do outdoors. So the big question is, what type of fan and how many do you need? For me, quantity is the key to better cooling. And I'll be frank with you, I'm quite a sweaty bloke. So I need all the cooling I can get. For my ultimate setup, I'm sticking with the Wahoo gear and adding that kicker headwind to my setup. It adjusts the power of the fan with your speed. And if you position it right, will give you airflow in the perfect areas to keep you at your coolest. Okay, we're all set for keeping cool. Although Rasan is always gonna be a bit cooler than me. And keeping cool leads me nicely on to the final part of our ultimate ride, comfort. As we know, training can be very hard, so we'll need to make sure that we're as comfortable as possible on the bike. My number one pick is a table or a flat surface to put stuff on that we need. My flat surface, as you can see, is a good old fashioned ironing board. I mean, most people have these knocking about the house. They're easily adjustable from a height perspective. They're pretty much the same length as the bike. And just look at all that real estate. Having a nearby surface to put your stuff on will give you access to things that you may need on your ride. You don't want to be stopping mid-ride to run and get a snack if you're midway through a race, for example, or jumping off your bike to get a gel midway through a threshold session. Now, the area we all need to ensure remains comfortable is our backside. If I have one golden rule of comfort, it's don't wear old bib shorts. Those shorts work harder for you indoors than they do outside. So wear your favorites on Zwift. Now, I might have mentioned before, I am quite a sweaty bloke. So I always have a nice, big, fluffy towel to hand when I'm training to drape over my handlebars and my top tube to absorb the tears of my labor. In fact, I would say that a towel is an absolutely essential bit of kit when training indoors. Just make sure it's a soft and fluffy one and not a coarse one so it feels like you're rubbing your face with a piece of toast. Mats. Yep. Not you, mats for your bike and home trainer. They're important for a couple of reasons. They protect the floor and catch its sweat and they also help keep the bike from moving around and can help reduce the noise when you're working out. So that's it, my ultimate indoor ride. And uh, Rasan's almost ultimate indoor ride over there. What? You have yours and I have mine. And I think we're both pretty happy. True. So go ahead, drop your thoughts in the comments below and let us know which one of these ultimate indoor rides you think you would have in your home or what you would do differently. Now, I'm sure you're well aware, but Zwift is a very high-tech beast, relying on an incredible amount of data, never more so than during races like the UCI Cycling Esports World Championships and the Zwift Racing League. As official data partner, NTT Data brings that information to life on screen for your viewing pleasure. But how I hear you ask, I have no idea. Let's find out together. Hi, my name's Rob Webster. I'm a Vice President in the Advanced Technology Group for Sport. We're here at NTT today and we're the partners with Zwift most recently for the eSports World Championships. Zwift definitely attracts people who are interested in the numbers. You see it on uh, the road cycling and, and people, you know, pouring over uh, Strava stats, people diving into and looking at their Zwift score and their, their uh, you know, functional threshold power and all kinds of highly technical measures. Uh, there is the average heart rate of these riders here. Daniel Turek, 145 at the moment. Jambrosik, uh, 151. Essentially, the Zwift platform is creating what I would call a digital twin of the athlete um, in the virtual world and you can see your own performance and other people can see what's happening with you. What we're able to bring is 
uh, take the information that's happening right now and essentially aggregate it, aggregate it over time or, or do um, analytics over periods of time. So since the last arch or over the last five minutes or for the whole race and compare individual riders or group up the riders into groups and then compare the performance of those two groups. And you really need that for a high quality broadcast um, so that it's easy for someone who isn't in the race to actually understand what's going on. I tell you what, he's riding very, very strongly at the moment and this is a formidable duo out in front. The lead up now to just over nine seconds. We work closely with the team doing the broadcast graphics so that our data is directly connected to the graphics and the numbers that you see on screen are happening in real time. Meanwhile, Kilchinski pressing on at the front, 5.4 watts per kilo. But Zwift isn't only about power. It is a game. It's actually a combination of their power, their watts per kilogram, and how well they are playing the game, the use of power-ups at the right point in time and the use of drafting. There's a first view of the draft map. You can just see the riders right back in there where you want to be in terms of getting the draft benefit and therefore spending less energy is right in that red section there. So we essentially came up with possibly the geekiest measurement ever of uh, kilometers per hour per watts per kilogram. Obviously we needed a slightly catchier name than that, which is the efficiency score. And it becomes very interesting because often the winner is not necessarily the person with the highest power. It isn't just about power. It's actually the person who's played the game best. So in the most recent uh, eSports World Championships, um, Zwift were able to bring a fantastic innovation to the game, which rather than power-ups being randomly allocated at, at the key points in the race, um, they could actually be predefined. Now if you look just below the top 10 riders uh, rotating, we can see the power-ups held powered by NTT. This, I think, was really exciting and revolutionary because the power-up suddenly, um, rather than being a roll of the dice, players knew that they would be getting a power-up at the third checkpoint and then could choose whether they hung on to that one for use later in the game or used it now because they actually wanted the aero power-up that was coming later on. That was a fantastic innovation from the game point of view. We were able to support that from the fans' experience in tracking the power-ups that had been used and, and therefore had not yet been used by the riders. Very few other esports where your physical performance um, directly plays out in the game. I think as people come to appreciate its uniqueness, the level of competition will increase and we're already seeing it on the Zwift Racing League. It's bringing a new group of athletes. They're not road cyclists. Um, they are specialists on the eSport platform and I think it's going to just increase the an, an amount of exciting sport that fans can watch. It's been a busy few weeks for Maud Alderman, fresh off the back of competing in the UCI Cycling eSports World Championships. The 2021 Zwift Academy winner took to the start line for her first races as a professional cyclist with Canyon Shram in that amazing kit. And if racing on the cobbles of Northern Belgium wasn't enough, she then took on her first stage race as well. So let's see how she got on. race with the Cage Tram team. We start at Le Sommet. So we're now outside at the mechanic park and the bikes are getting ready because tomorrow it's race day. This is our team fan. So exciting to, to ride as a pro in the peloton for the first time. Tomorrow I will think of a lot of firsts. It will be my first elite UCI race. 
It will be my first race on cobbles. <laughs> it will be my first race of 100k and my first race of the K with the Kenyan Strong team. I don't feel any pressure from the team, but now I also maybe feel a little bit pressure from people that have seen the Swift Academy and think, can she do it outside as well? Super hectic race. Every five minutes someone crashed or something happens. It was just crash after crash, so I was just surviving. I'm happy that I finished. It's a good starting point. Currently in Friesland, it's in the north of the Netherlands, and today we ride the first stage of Blue Zone of Friesland. It's a stage race here we do with the team. And today we have an individual time trial, it's gonna be 14 and a half K, so yeah, really exciting. I felt pretty hard on my left leg, um, but the wound is healing well and just feels a bit stiff, but yeah. Underway for the second stage yesterday with the time trial. We have a 135k race today, so it's pretty long. I've learned a lot from after my crash, like how to deal with it and how to come back. And Lars really helped me with over the radio. Nice job. Fight for that first echelon, stay in that. She has uh, some tough uh, fighting here in that big peloton. Yeah. It's always uh, big step from under 19 to elite. Get out of the saddle for the sprint. It was pretty hard and again really long. I finally managed to get to the like the front front of the peloton then Shari crashed in the last 5k's I tried to bring her back to the first car so impressed by the girl she's just like it's a lot to ask of your like your body and your head I think it's a sport you have to grow up quite quick and I think she's yeah she's got a I think, big future ahead of her it'll be exciting to see what she can do once she's got a few more races under her belt Third day of Louis on the Friesland's over. One week, five races, and yeah, I feel like I've learned so much from only this week already. My legs feel pretty empty now, so I think it's good to have a little bit of recovery now. Ace work mild, and I think I speak for everyone at Zwift when I say we look forward to seeing how the rest of your season goes. Time now for another edition of Hot Bike Stuff, where I put the latest cycling gizmos and gadgets through their paces. This week, we have the Hyperice Hypervolt. Now, you've probably seen your favorite cyclists using the handheld percussive massages, but they are just for the pro peloton. No, no, no. For the uninitiated, the rapid pulses help stimulate blood flow to the muscles that promotes better circulation, which in turn will relieve muscle pain and can even improve your mobility. So, let's put that to the test. So how does the Hypervolt work in the real world? Well, just a moment ago, I was involved in a friendly race. Come back here, you suckers! I'm gonna crush you under my wheels! Ah! And thus, now, my muscles are all pretty sore. So what I've been doing after workouts on Zwift and after races is using the Hyperice Hypervolt. Super simple, three speeds, on the back, you press the button. I always have a maximum because I'm that kind of guy. And then, you stick it on your muscles. If somewhere feels sore, you're supposed to hold it there for 30 seconds. That gets the lactate out, refreshes the muscles. So for me personally, it's meant I've been able to train harder and then feel fresher the next day, which is the point of this sort of thing. Whew. Plus I like the vibrations, they make me feel funny. 
Break out the good news horn, because those of you who enjoyed last year's Crit Crusher series or anyone else who likes to go off the beaten track, the series doth return in June this year as the Giant Gravel Crushers. The format will be a short back-to-back -back workout in the form of a race series across four weeks. You can test out the new Giant Revolt Advanced Pro or Live Devote Advanced Pro. And if that wasn't exciting enough, ride any event to unlock, drumroll please, thank you, the backwards cap. Well, better way to prepare for the giant gravel crusher series than Zwift's gravel grinders training plan, devised by our very own Matt Lieto and with workouts handpicked by who else other than Shane Gaffney. The gravel grinder training plan is perfect for any Zwifters looking to add some grit to their chain and will prepare you for the specific demands of gravel racing where gearing, traction, and cadence all take on new dimensions compared to riding on the road. The giant gravel grinder training plan is ideally completed in around eight weeks and is the perfect prep ahead of the upcoming Gravel Crushers race series in June. Workouts focus upon a range of free rides and base building to cadence drills and threshold efforts. One feature of the training plan is a weekly group workout personally selected by Shane Gaffney where you'll take on the rugged tracks of Watopia and McCurry Islands. Here is Shane with a lowdown on those weekly workouts. This eight week training plan kicks off on March 30th and features weekly group workouts hosted by Zwift's own off-road ambassadors. These include Pete Mullins, Tilly Field, John Odoms, and Brendan Trekkie Johnston. No worries if you miss a group workout on Wednesday. You can always find it on demand in the gravel grinder folder. Early on in the plan, the only goal is easy aerobic efforts. Get on the bike, put a little bit of pressure on the pedals, and enjoy the experience. As you gain fitness, you'll push yourself above FTP for nine times three minute efforts, because you never know when those attacks are gonna start to happen. The plan is run it off with the Old Faithful, which is of course, the over-under. Over-unders are a very important aspect of gravel racing, so you better get used to the burn in those legs. After you've gritted your teeth and completed the training, guess what? It's time to crush the giant Gravel Crushers race series. The format is short back-to-back -back races appropriate for Zwifters of all abilities and levels. A short opening race will warm the legs, followed by a longer race so you can really get after it and crush it. Good luck out there. And that is all for this edition of the World of Zwift. And in fact, until the autumn, till the leaves are dropping, I'm going to be packing up the bite box over the summer. But fear not, myself and the World of Zwift will be back later this year. You have the OJ Borge, no money back guarantee on that. In the meantime, there's still be plenty to keep your eye out for here and across all of the Zwift social channels, not least around the Tour de France fam avec Zwift. So feel free to let us know what you'd like to see more of when we return in the comments below. In the meantime, ride on. Thank you.